Hey everybody, welcome back. So part two in our three-part series of properly deploying Home Assistant in a supported platform. Check out that first video if you haven't already seen it. That's for Home Assistant OS on a Raspberry Pi. That's the easiest and most streamlined path to a fully supported Home Assistant deployment. You flash Home Assistant OS, which is their official fully supported OS onto an SD card. You plug that into your Raspberry Pi, you're off and running, awesome. Now, there's two other methods. This is part two of that. This is gonna be the one that takes the most work to do by far. We're getting way into the weeds with Linux, but it's also gonna give you almost the same experience as Home Assistant OS in that you have the fully supervised ecosystem. So you have add-ons in addition to all the other features of Home Assistant. On the surface, it feels the same as Home Assistant OS. The difference is you're managing the underlying operating system. And then the third one, which we'll get into after this in the third video, will be the container version of Home Assistant. That's fully separate and that requires the most of you operationally, although I think getting it deployed is still pretty simple. It's simpler than this one. So this one's the tough one, let's get into it. I recommend you take another look, go back to the Home Assistant deployment guides. This is our matrix of all the different options that we've got for deploying Home Assistant, okay? Uh, so the one we're doing today is that last column, supervised. Take a quick peek at those, make sure you understand kind of what you're in for here. Now, supervised, Essentially, you have to run Debian operating system. You can't run any derivatives. No Ubuntu, no Armbian, nothing else. Has to be Debian, okay? That's, the, that's one of the really important keys of all this. And more specific than that, it must be Debian 12, which is codenamed Bookworm. From there, you're, you're pretty free to move about. There's, there's some other dependencies, but whether that's x86 or ARM hardware, the hardware itself now no longer matters as much, okay? So where Home Assistant OS only runs on very specific hardware platforms. Supervised with your own hardware, you've got more flexibility in the hardware, but the operating system, very specific if you wanna stay within a supported platform. That's important. Don't waste your time deploying a home automation platform that's not supported. You're just gonna give yourself trouble. You're setting this up for failure. For our particular example, I'm running the Radexa Rock 4A. Now it's hardwired. Please, 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 please. <laughs> Anything that is not a mobile device, please hardwire it. Don't be using Wi-Fi for things like this. Now, you're gonna say, hey, my Wi-Fi is super fast. It's, you know, it's faster than gigabit. Gotcha. There are networking technologies that sometimes can get tripped up in wireless. So when we're talking broadcast things like MDNS and Avahi, things like that, you have to really know what you're doing in your Wi-Fi platform in order to run that. Now, if you're gonna take that risk, cool. But if you have trouble with some of that auto discovery stuff, I will say I told you so. <laughs> okay, let's move on. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the current release for this. Uh, for this particular piece of hardware. So this is a Rock Pi 4A Debian Bullseye. Okay, Bullseye is Debian 11. We said earlier, it must be Debian 12. Okay, unfortunately, uh, Radexa does not have a Debian 12 release for this yet. However, you can easily do an in-place upgrade after you install it. So we're gonna take that path, and this ties together a few other things that are probably gonna be valuable to you. So I recommend following along. You can learn how to do an upgrade from Debian 11 to Debian 12. We're gonna do a full supervised deploy. Let's get started. Whatever hardware platform you are choosing to use, go ahead and get your Debian 11 or Debian 12 preferably. We have to end up at 12 to be supported. Don't forget that. Uh, we're starting with 11 on this process. So grab it, flash it to your SD card so that it's bootable and up and running on your hardware. And once you've got that, go ahead and boot it up. Okay, so let's go ahead and boot up my Rock 4. There it goes, Debian 11. Whatever it does at first boot, boom, you're off and running. Okay, now if you are following along with a Rock Series chip and you're using Radex's images, uh, the initial login is username rock, password rock. Complicated, right? Make sure you change that. Password change, step one, always do that. <laughs> okay, so let's just really quickly take a look at what the overall process is. So we have Debian 11, we need to get to Debian 12. So we're gonna do the in-place upgrade from Debian 11 to Debian 12. We're gonna do the dependency installation, then we're going to install the OS agent, and then we're going to install Home Assistant Supervised. Off we go, update 
Debian 11 to Debian 12. There is a link down in the description to all of these complete steps. So you don't need to keep pausing, rewinding to try to capture uh, these individual commands. I do have all of these captured. You can reach those on the website and follow along that way. First thing we need to do is go ahead and change the repositories to be looking for bookworm instead of bullseye. There's a few places to make these updates. The first one, the main sources list. Essentially what we're going to be doing is changing bullseye references to bookworm, the code name for Debian 12. Then the bulk of these are actually in the sources list.d folder. Perfect, let's take a quick look at each of these. Backports, yep, we have a bullseye reference there the security repo here. You can jump ahead here as you uh, see fit. We're just gonna make these changes real quick here across the board. And the only one in here that's really not like part of the base here is you can see if there's a, there's a Radex uh, repo here. So this is where like the kernel drivers and some of the hardware specific things are gonna be hiding out in here. So this says two references to bullseye. If you were to chase down this URL here. So with these all done, uh, we're just gonna wanna get apt up to date. So sudo apt update. And it's gonna touch all those repos. And you'll see if you take a close look at these, uh, these are all gonna be um, bookworm repos now if we take a look at what's being referenced in here. So this is just gonna grab those updated package lists. Okay, with that up to date, we are in a good spot to start that in place upgrade. Sudo apt upgrade and we're gonna use this switch so that it doesn't go crazy and download all kinds of new packages in the process here. We're gonna do without new PKGS packages. Enter to proceed and we're off to the races here. So this will take a little bit of time. Let this run through its thing. It also might ask you a couple times, sometimes it comes across like a configuration file and it'll ask you uh, whether or not you wanna keep the previous configuration within that file or overwrite it with the package, hit no on that as you see those. So you'll see that a couple times through the process here. Yeah, here's an example of one of those here. Default to no. Okay, good. All right, and we are successful. That's the apt upgrade. Now the next thing we need to do is the actual OS upgrade. sudo apt full dash upgrade. Okay, off and running here. So this will Again, generate another big list of things that it's gonna update. Go ahead and hit yes, off it goes, and this will take some time again. So it's gonna chew through this just like before. Wait for this to complete. Keep an eye on it, see if it's prompting you for anything along the way. Okay, that completed successfully. Next thing we wanna do is go ahead and reboot into our shiny new upgraded Debian 12. We can also check and validate that it is indeed updated. So if you run lsb underscore release, dash A, and we'll see here that it is now Debian codename bookworm and release 12. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and reboot into that fresh new OS. Okay, rebooted successfully, logged back into SSH. Next, we're going to pile on a whole set of prerequisites. Again, these are all listed down in the description. So go ahead and click through to that link to the website where I've got uh, the step-by-step -step here all outlined here. You could just copy and paste, drop that in. I'm going to do exactly that. I'm going to copy and paste that in. We use the dash Y switch here. So it will uh, enumerate the packages that need to be updated and it'll go ahead and just start running through those. So this is all the prereqs uh, that are required for uh, Docker, for the uh, OS agent, and for the Home Assistant supervised to function properly. And with that done, we're gonna go ahead and install Docker. Now, the preferred way to do this is Docker has a nice kind of pre-made script. So you just run this one liner. So what it does, is it's gonna pull from get.docker.com and it's gonna execute that. And it's a silent install. So it's gonna do everything it can to kind of pipe the output of this to dev slash null. Uh, so that your screen doesn't get terribly noisy. Now some stuff does come out as you'll see here uh, and that's okay, that's expected. And we have Docker installed successfully. Now, one thing I like to do at this point is so that you don't have to sudo all of your Docker commands forever and ever, uh, you can go ahead and add your user to the Docker group and that'll allow you to run Docker commands without prefixing them with sudo. So we'll do sudo user mod dash A capital G the name of the group, which is Docker, and then your username. So in this case, I'm logged in as Rock. And so that's gonna add my user to the Docker group. We're gonna install the OS agent. So this here is going to uh, pull down the uh, OS agent, and now we're gonna install it. So we'll do sudo apt install 
dot forward slash and then the name of the package. Off and running, OS agent's really quick to install. So next up, we're gonna make a couple changes to the kernel boot command line to enable app armor and to also enable C group V1. So that's, uh, that's required for home assistant supervised. So sudo nano etc kernel command line. Don't mess around in here much. This is a this is a dangerous spot. So what we're going to do is just go to the very end of this single line file and we're going to paste in the the line here from the instructions. Go ahead and save that file and then we're going to update it. So sudo u-boot-update will tell the system to go ahead and reread that file and apply that to the boot configuration. Now, at this stage, it's a good idea to go ahead and reboot once more because these are kind of core changes to the operating system. After you reboot, go ahead and get back into the system. Now we're ready to proceed with actually installing Home Assistant Supervised. All right, the moment we've all been waiting for. So let's go ahead and uh, get that uh, installer here. So that command again will pull down that uh, deb file and then we're gonna execute that in the same way we did with the OS agent. sudo apt install dot forward slash and the name of the deb file itself. And take a look, there's a lot of options in here. I'm going the QEMU ARM-64. This works well for the ROC4 SOC in particular. In the background, it's doing its thing. So if we pull up Docker stats, uh, this is gonna continue to run in the background as it's pulling out those images. So nothing in there quite yet, takes a minute. But let's take a look. This is a good area to take a look at what it's doing behind the scenes. I like this command. Uh, so if you run sudo journal ctl dash f for follow, it's gonna show you exactly what it's doing in the background, kind of under the hood of the OS itself. So a lot of this is, you know, doesn't mean a lot to us uh, on our daily use and experiences in Linux, but in particular, what you'll see is, is it pulling down those images. So it, it takes a few minutes uh, to do its thing. You'll see it bopping around in some of the DNS resolvers within the OS itself. And eventually it'll be pulling down those images and, and doing its thing. So I'm gonna kill that off. Let's take another look at Docker stats, see if we get anything popping in there yet. Aha, we do. So what we're looking for in here uh, in particular is uh, the very last one that just popped in, that Home Assistant container. So all these ones that are prefixed, HASS.io, those are part of the, the core of the OS. Home Assistant is the actual front end, uh, the web interface that you'll, you'll be looking for. So with that up, and if we pull that up in a browser, so it's gonna be the IP address of your server, and it's port 8123. That's what Home Assistant uses for its port. So you'll see this web interface, fantastic. It says it's gonna take about 20 minutes to load up all the things in the background. Once it finishes, you'll be presented with your default screen here where you can uh, either restore from a backup if you're coming from a, an existing home assistant, uh, or you can go ahead and get started. Now, uh, I want you to do one more reboot before you actually get into this. And the reason is, since we haven't rebooted, since we did the prereqs in Docker, there will be an error inside the uh, interface here that says that it doesn't have appropriate access to manage Docker. And that's just a reboot because of the process here. So let's do that. Okay. And then once we've rebooted, uh, give it a few minutes because these containers do take a few minutes to come up. So you can see I've got my Docker stats running there in the background and we're back. We've got our interface here. Let's just pop right in really quick. We'll be able to just create an account. We'll decide what we want to do about any telemetry data off by default. It'll find some devices on our network and boom, we're off and running. As we go into the settings and we go to system, and we'll go to repairs, nothing available to repair, which means that's a great thing. That means we're in a good spot and we're up to date. So, hey, that's it for today, guys. Thanks for joining me today. I just wanted to show you, hey, you can get to a fully supported Home Assistant supervised installation on various hardware platforms as long as you follow those guidelines to make sure you get it right. So I hope this was helpful for you. And this was the toughest one as far as what you have to do to get it up and running, but now we have a very similar experience as to what you would have in a normal Home Assistant OS deployment. Very, very similar. You just are managing the OS go forward from this point. In our third video in this series, we're going to do this as the Docker container version of this. Now this is going to be a pretty easy install, but it's going to require more, more of you as, a, as far as understanding how Docker works and getting that up and running. And also it's going to be a little harder to get things into Home Assistant because you don't have the add-ons integrated into the supervised install like you do here. 
So again, I hope this was really helpful for you guys. Please let me know what you think down in the comments. Please like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you'll see the next video coming in. Thanks again for joining me. I'll see you soon.